Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Spheric Global Seminar. Good to see you all. We are going to have some art and some history with our SBH today. We uh, are delighted to have Professor David Latuze and Dr. Salvatore Morone presenting today on their work on Da Vinci's observation of turbulence. David Latuze is a professor of fluid mechanics at the Gold Central Nantes. He works on many numerical methods uh, and couplings between methods, but especially on SPH uh, with special interest in ocean engineering and automotive and cardiovascular fluid dynamics applications. Dr. Salvatore Morone is a researcher at CNR INM, uh, the Institute of Marine Engineering in the Italian National Research Council. He's a specialist in SPH and also in uh, diffuse vortex hydrodynamics uh, and works on naval and marine engineering applications. Uh, and of course, they are both members of a, a long standing collaboration between Nantes and INM, which has uh, contributed a lot of knowledge to SPH uh, over the years and has developed the SPH flow software. And they are members of, the, of, of that collaborative team, which has twice won the, the Joe Monaghan Prize for fundamental advances on the uh, spheric grand challenges in SPH. So um, we will have some discussions some questions and answers uh, after the talk. We are now recording and we'll uh, re we keep recording the seminar and uh, publish it on YouTube uh, eventually. We won't record the, uh, the, the, question the questions and answers at the end. So uh, over to you, David. Okay. Thank you very much, Nassim, for a nice introduction. Uh, so I will start and Salvatore will, will speak uh, next. So actually, uh, we did something which is a bit uh, uh, different than, than uh, um, engineering, uh, which is our typical <laughs> field of research. And uh, it's uh, actually a study between the, the, the Rome and the NAND group. And we tried to reproduce numerically the Leonardo da Vinci drawing that you have uh, just in front of you. Uh, we, we did this uh, for the, the, the 500th anniversary of, of his death. So what will be presented to you today uh, is um, detailed in a recent publication in Physics of Fluids, if you're, inter if you're interested. And also there, there is visual material uh, uh, to which uh, Salvatore will give you links at the end of uh, this presentation. So what was our motivation? It's actually that we are a, a French uh, Italian group and, uh, as, uh, and we are working on, on free surface flows for uh, 15 years, uh, even close to 20 now. And um, as you may know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was uh, passionate by this free surface flows, uh, which was which were one of his favorite uh, topic of study, especially the field of uh, hydraulics, which was under um, um, very lively uh, activity uh, in engineering at his time, uh, with inventions of mach machines, etc. So he made uh, hundreds of drawings uh, studying the hydraulic uh, situations. Here you have a self uh, portrait of him in front of uh, some of his uh, hydraulic uh, drawings. Um, and since he was, since he, he is uh, him also uh, partly uh, Italian and French, he is obviously Italian and lived for the major part of his life in Italy, but he came to France in 1516 for the last three years of his life. He was invited by King uh, Francis the first, uh, who gave him the manor of Colusse and uh, he did uh, the, the last um, uh, drawings and uh, studies uh, of his there. And um, so the, the 500th anniversary of his death was uh, two years ago, three years ago almost now. And uh, so for this anniversary, we, we tried to, to do something and so to reproduce this, uh, this drawing. So Da Vinci is also known for, uh, known for having the, the first to speak of turbulence or at least to 
speak in, in a more or less scientific way of, of turbulence. At least he has named uh, the word turbulence sign in a fluid dynamic uh, context, uh, context uh, as you, you have here on, on a part of the drawings. And there is a link uh, between this uh, turbulence and the drawing we are trying to reproduce in the sense that this drawing, not because it is actually on this drawing that he spoke of turbulence uh, clearly, but uh, since it's more one of the more uh, complex uh, and uh, with uh, the, so the biggest number of uh, fluid dynamic features, I think this, um, it is this drawing which was cho chosen by the community uh, to illustrate the, the turbulence problem and the link between turbulence and Da Vinci and the drawings of Da Vinci, as you can see here on some courses or books or um, articles. And of course, uh, the last, uh, our last motivation is that we, 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 were, we, we could be in capacity of, of reproducing this drawing as experts in, in, in simulating geometry complex resurface flows with the SPH method. Uh, it was worth uh, trying, at least. And so we, we started our investigation. So the first thing which is striking if one looks at this drawing is the fact that you see um, what uh, standard observation would, 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 would give you, that is a complex free surface. But also, uh, Leonardo da Vinci has drawn partly underneath parts of the flow. You see here you have some large eddies uh, which are uh, underwater eddies, and he actually represented them in his drawing, which is clearly not a direct observation because if, it's, if this is water, clearly you will not see exactly this uh, part that, of course, uh, it is dynamic. So, uh, with this observation, uh, we, we first try to, to, to figure out where does this drawing come from, what is its history, and what does it precisely represent. So our methodology of investigation was thus first to dig into the story of uh, this specific drawing and generally in the story of Leonardo's uh, hydrolink drawings, uh, understanding his scientific environment, uh, the, the analysis uh, in, in the modern literature which were made of, of his work uh, in this field of hydraulics. Also analyzing the comments, you see you have drawings, but you have many notes under the drawings and analyzing what uh, Leonardo said under the drawing, what, was, what were his comments on this drawing, what was described there. Um, then the next step was to investigate uh, what is the actual configuration of the drawing, uh, because we don't know the, the place, we don't know the size, we don't know the flow conditions, etc. So this is, there is a part of mystery, of course. And then uh, we had to adapt our uh, solver and the method, the SPH method inside the solver to be able to reproduce this. Um, we had to analyze them uh, once it was uh, uh, sufficiently resembling the, the drawing. We had to analyze the, the importance of the different flow characteristics, etc to converge to final simulations on the very large simulations on, on a cluster and using also cutting edge uh, graphic rendering to be able both to simulate and visualize the flow details and in the end to compare to uh, what uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, had, had drawn. So starting with the, with the first point, so the story of uh, a bit of story, uh, we first looked into the, the literature and we, we quickly uh, figured out that the, the story of, uh, that, that brought this drawing to us is very complex. Uh, as you may know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci is of course known for uh, some very famous paintings, which are very few, but also he is known for hundreds, thousands of designs, notes on inventions, uh, scientific researches, uh, plans, caricatures, landscapes, uh, maps, etc., architectural designs, uh, um, machine designs, etc., and iconic images like the, the Vitruvian man, you know, the man with the, the six arms, I guess, the naked man with six arms. And so he, at the end of his life, he had a, a really a very large corpus of, of these drawings and notes, 
and he gave everything to his uh, friend and student, uh, Francesco Melzi. But quickly, uh, the story is very complex, but quickly all was uh, dispersed, sold, uh, dismembered, reassembled, and, and then reassembled in two large format volumes with some part of, of, of his work which is lost, some part of his work which is probably not uh, yet uh, recovered, but there, there are some uh, big uh, volumes, big, big books if you want, and those were named uh, codices. And these codices uh, themselves, they had very complex story from uh, this time, so the, the 16th century uh, up to, to our days. So the, the, there are different ones. There is one in Paris, but the, 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 probably the, the, the more renowned are the Madrid Codex, the Atlantic Codex, and the Windsor Collection. And here we will speak a bit of the Atlantic Codex because it is where uh, turbulence, the world turbulence uh, appeared, and a bit of the Windsor Collection because it is where our uh, uh, drawing, I mean, the drawing we are trying to reproduce uh, was. Uh, is, is, is uh, pr present uh, today. We, for, for, the, for the anecdote, we had to ask uh, some permission from uh, the Queen of the uh, of, uh, United Kingdom uh, to be able to use some material. Um, so the, the world, regarding the world turbulence, uh, the main researcher who, who worked on Da Vinci uh, hydrolink drawings was a, a prof from um, University of Iowa, from uh, IIHR more, more precisely, uh, which is called uh, Enzo Macagno, who died uh, 10, 10 years ago. And he was the, let's say, the international expert on the Da Vinci, da Vinci work on the hydraulic, hydraulic part, he was able to read what uh, Leonardo had, had written in old uh, Italian. And um, also he reproduced some of his uh, experiments, etc. And he, he wrote a number of articles, uh, books uh, on, on, on the topic. So regarding the word turbulence, which appears uh, as a note under one of the drawings of Leonardo, you see everything was written from uh, right to left and in, in Leonardo's notes in a, in a funny way. So the, the direct, um, what Leonardo wrote was this, and here you have the, the translation by, by Macagno. Um, and it's interesting to, to, to see that uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, speaks of generation of turbulence, then he speaks of, of persistence of the turbulence over a long distance, and then to the fact that uh, the water settles. So already in, in, its, in his analysis, uh, da Vinci figured out key aspects of, of turbulence that it exists very frequently uh, in, in, in the motion of water. It is irregular, uh, it gives rise to a mixing, and it possesses a kind of structure which will decay after a while and uh, when, it, when it goes uh, downstream. And these uh, specificities are actually uh, one of the key uh, aspects of turbulence. Then, um, de determining whether uh, Leonardo da Vinci was actually speaking or understanding the turbulence as we know it today is something which is a bit tricky. Of course, he, he doesn't know the, the Kolmogorov uh, theory, etc. This is for sure. But uh, up to, to what extent he had understood it is it, it, difficult to, to measure. And uh, experts don't really agree on, on it. For instance, Macagno is, is quite dubious for, for Macagno. He, he, he speaks as turbulence in the sense of turbidity. That is, he observed that uh, there, there is a sediment transport with a complex um, uh, scales or structures in the flow, but not turbulence in the general sense in any flow of uh, any uh, fluid at a uh, higher Reynolds number. Of course, Reynolds uh, was not born. Um, so for, for Macagno, it's more linked to turbidity and uh, the word of turbulence in this sense, of, in the sense of turbidity is, is ancient. It was already present in, a, in ancient uh, Latin uh, uh, 
writings or stories we read. Okay, so after having investigated a bit the story of the of the, of the drawing, uh, we we further investigate. So we did different things. Uh, Andrea and, and Salvatore they went to Vinci, the city of Vinci, to the museum. They also went in the in, 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 in the country around to to figure out a bit what was the environment of a. Uh, of, of Leonardo, we, we, I made small experiments in Central Nantes, etc. But what we did, more importantly, is that we went to uh, discuss with uh, a specialist of Leonardo da Vinci in the history of science uh, uh, part, and uh, the same for the history of arts part. So we, uh, we, I met uh, an historian of, of science specialist of da Vinci, and uh, they met uh, an historian of our specialist of, of Da Vinci. And once what they pictured out, um, what we pictured, what, what, what we figured out from, from this uh, meeting, from what we read, etc., is that Leonardo, in, in, in reality, really invented uh, a kind of pictorial scientific method, which is probably more important than, than his work on engineering, for instance, which. Uh, uh, with discussion, we understood uh, that they are known because it is extremely well drawn, but compared to the rest of what was done at the time, it's not so um, amazing, or, or at least it, it has to be moderated. But he really invented a kind of pictorial scientific method, which means that 100 years before Galileo, we invented the scientific method, the experimental method, the experimental in investigation of physical uh, phenomena. 300 years before Navier and Stokes, Navier and Stokes, that is our uh, basic equations, the basic equations which are driving uh, this, this flow, which are descri describing these flows. And of course, uh, even before the people of turbulence who described, understood, and described it, so which was the, the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century. And with no equation and almost no maths, uh, he still had a real method of in investigation through uh, drawing. So this is quite peculiar. In the sense, by drawing, drawing, observing, drawing, etc., he was able not only to describe, but also to understand physical phenomena and even to um, understand or, or to, to, to derive some phenomenological explanations, even of part of, femen, of phenomena I could not see by, by simple uh, observation. And so his, his, his capacity of uh, accurately drawing and uh, every situation and then to uh, compare the drawings, etc., put him up to the possibility of making real uh, scientific, in a sense, investigation. So this is uh, quite uh, impressive. And this can be seen on our drawing. So if we take this drawing, some, some researchers put this drawing into x-rays, and what they observe is that here in the bottom, you have what uh, Leonardo uh, drew first. So what he drew first is actually those underwater eddies the complex underwater structure of the flow. This is what he, he did first. And then he, he, he drew the rest of the free surface, uh, where you have the burst of uh, big bubbles on the free surface, uh, complex, you have some kind of recirculations, et cetera, et cetera. Which means that uh, he actually saw this as a free surface flow and a general interaction between the impinging jet and uh, the, the still water uh, below. And if we are looking at the notes uh, behind the drawing, he actually analyzed quite uh, in details and we could say quite well from our modern perspective, what are the key aspects of this flow? The fact that the submerged air in the water is, is, is really a key that uh, this submerged air inside uh, together with the jet uh, gives the burst to the formation of large bubbles, which are entraining water upwards towards the free surface as they burst at the free surface. 
and also that the jet is uh, striking the ground and consuming the ground, the ground of probably a river, or we don't know what, what, what was the ground, but he's speaking of the ground. And also is describing some eddies at the free surface, especially close to the jet, so a kind of a, uh, circulation linked to, to the impingement of the jet, and a large uh, circulation around the, the global uh, flow at the, at the free surface. And it is also confirmed by other um, drawings of him. Uh, he made tons, hundreds and hundreds of hydraulic drawings, as we said. And he made some preliminary or complementary drawings where deep, this the same configuration, that is a flow arriving on, on top of the free surface, uh, but with uh, studying different aspects. So, um, the, the large vertical structures and then is the water uh, under a different form. The burst of big bubbles at the free surface uh, with small bubbles, big bubbles bursting, etc., etc., which really uh, uh, demonstrates that he actually analyzed the different features of the, of the flow. And this is actually a, a, scientific, uh, a scientific method. And this closes our uh, first, the first part of, uh, of our investigation. And uh, then in the following, we actually try to reproduce uh, this, uh, this drawing by, by SPH. And this is uh, what uh, Salvatore will describe now. So our questions were uh, what was actually represented by Leonardo in terms of size, conditions, flow characteristics, uh, um, air. Um, Entrainment, air presence in the in the inflow, turbulence, etc. How then we can reproduce it numerically with the speech method we had, and what uh, adaptation did we need? And then, uh, if we did very big simulations, maybe the biggest simulations we could do, and if we are able to visualize it uh, in detail, can we do, do we find what uh, Da Vinci drew? Is it uh, Realistic or how, or on in the other way around, are we able to to recover this? Are there some differences, etc.? And this is uh, what uh, Salvatore will describe now to, to you. Okay. Thank you, David. So I'm going to to talk about the uh, the numerical uh, uh, reproduction of the drawing of the Da Vinci's drawing by SPH. And uh, I want to, to start by uh, recalling uh, a pioneering, a prominent study made uh, in, uh, presented on uh, European Journal of Mechanics uh, B, uh, uh, in 2014 by Professor Joe Monaghan and Dr. Jules Kaitar, where they tried uh, to do exactly this, to reproduce that, uh, that flow and study the physics behind the flows. That was a very uh, quite pioneering study. It was done only in 2D, uh, but uh, it was a, a very good attempt in trying to, 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 the, to do that simulation. And uh, uh, so the, the problem is, it was that uh, being only 2D, uh, the, the result was quite different with respect to the, um, to the Da Vinci's drawing. And also the, uh, the usage of uh, uh, standard SPH method uh, uh, with the high dissipation caused uh, uh, quite uh, um, coarse uh, resolution of the vortex uh, uh, structures in the flow. So starting from this uh, uh, point, we uh, decided to uh, to use uh, to to uh, go directly in uh, in three D in the three dimensional framework, and so for that we had to use uh, big computational resources. We used the, the cluster in Nantes uh, to perform our simulations, and uh, uh, moreover we uh, decided to use a more uh, advanced scheme, and we adopted the one uh, just published in uh, 2021 on physics of fluids, which is uh, an SPH method, uh, which includes also uh, a large uh, eddy simulation model for the turbulence scale. Uh, in these schemes, indeed, there are many different uh, uh, many different aspects uh, merged together. Uh, the first one is the fact that uh, in the diffusive terms in uh, continuity and uh, uh, momentum equation, 
we have uh, uh, subgrid sub -grid scale models uh, uh, to account for, for uh, uh, non resolved the turbulent, turbulent stresses. And this is uh, uh, this is needed uh, uh, for uh, uh, at, um, for tackling the turbulent flows. Uh, but then we have also included a particle shifting technique, uh, included in a consistent way through uh, an arbitrary Lagrangian Lyron framework, so that uh, uh, we have uh, always a good. Uh, the positioning uh, of particles uh, uh, and we have low dissipation in, a, in our in our flows. Uh, and finally, we have also a further term in the uh, pressure gradient, which is uh, a tensile stability control, which, which is just a switch over uh, the um, uh, pressure gradient, which allows for uh, uh, resolving uh, uh, high vortice regions without uh, uh, the inception of the tensile stability. Uh, we validated this scheme uh, over uh, uh, academical uh, turbulence, uh, turbulent um, uh, test cases in 3D, and we had uh, good results uh, uh, also in comparison with the finite volume schemes. So this, uh, these schemes was tested uh, with, the, let's say, uh, classical turbulent uh, uh, problems. However, we needed also to, uh, uh, to address uh, multi-phase flows. And so we used the, the uh, um, multi-phase model uh, by Amani et al. Uh, on, in 2020, and we applied this large eddy simulation model to this scheme. So we have uh, um, further to the previous terms, we have also uh, an equation of state that is specific for each phase. And then we have also to uh, account for different uh, viscos viscosity and the turbulent viscosity for each phase. So when particle, uh, when we have particle interaction between uh, liquid and air, we have we have harmonic mean for the uh, for the turbulent and uh, uh, fluid viscosities. And finally, we have also a, a, a term for the uh, that accounts as a, 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 an artificial surface tension, which is needed in the uh, in the bubble uh, um, simulation. So uh, this is the model that we adopted at the end, but uh, actually the path to the final simulation was quite long and hard, I would say, because there, are, there were many unknowns uh, in this problem, as uh, uh, David already mentioned. First of all, we had to determine the uh, problem geometry. As, as you've seen, uh, there were no uh, indication about the condition of that flow, apart from uh, the fact that there was just a, a, a flow, uh, a jet uh, uh, over a, a gate, and then this jet penetrates in a water, in a, um, a pool of water. We don't know if it is a lake, a tank, uh, a river. We, the only uh, assumption that we made it, that is that, uh, uh, also for our simulation, is that it was enclosed some, somehow. So we, we assumed that it was a, a sort of tank. But then we had also to identify the numerical parameters of this simulation and the relevance of uh, turbulence and error entrainment in this flow. So it would, these were some uh, of the unknowns of our, uh, our uh, problem. Uh, and also at the end, we, have, we needed also to uh, visualize these, uh, uh, these simulations. And specially, specifically, we needed to uh, uh, have a, um, uh, practical and uh, rapid visualization of uh, uh, air, the, the air water interface and of the uh, above all the uh, vortex structures. So, so we, had, we needed also to tackle those uh, uh, problems. So uh, regarding the problem geometry, we started a long, very long uh, series of test cases, uh, always in 3D. We started directly from the 3D. So you can see here some slices uh, in the middle line of the, of the tank. And uh, as you can see the, in this sketch, all those uh, uh, length that uh, uh, I reported are unknowns of the problem. So we tr start trying different ways, uh, different lengths, uh, different ratios among those, uh, those uh, between those uh, length scales. 
And, but also uh, we had different uh, possibilities of uh, letting the, the jet enter into the water. We, can, we could directly uh, have an inlet above the, the pool, or uh, we tried also uh, putting a, a sort of chamber where it filled with water and letting the jet flow uh, over the, uh, the, the sluice gate, let's say, uh, so in a more, uh, let's say, more realistic way. So we tried different things. And we tried also, as you can see here on the uh, top, uh, on the bottom uh, right uh, plot, we tried also more uh, um, dissipative schemes, such as a standard uh, artificial viscosity scheme, where you can see that uh, the, if the viscosity is too high, no uh, vortices are generated. Uh, another uh, unknown was how to uh, let the, uh, the liquid to go outside the domain. So we had. Uh, we tried the different uh, outflows uh, from the tank, uh, from uh, just a part of uh, the front side, from uh, the four sides, for uh, um, we tried different different things, and we tried also to uh, start with the pool half filled or fully uh, completely filled at the beginning, uh, and uh, we 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 saw the differences uh, differences in these uh, um, with the, in these uh, conditions, so. Uh, as you can see in the drawing by Leonardo, uh, we had no, no ma uh, not many clues about uh, all these, uh, these, uh, uh, these issues. And also the jet is not, uh, the, the perspective view of the jet does not allow to clearly see what is the uh, thickness or the height uh, of the jet itself. So at the end, we, um, we um, Mm, we concluded this uh, initial stage with the, the uh, configuration that you can see now. Uh, so we started with the pool completely filled uh, and the uh, jet entering with the, um, generated directly at the inlet uh, above the, the pool. And we applied a velocity profile at the inlet to mimic uh, a boundary layer uh, on the in the in the um, in the uh, in the flow, so that uh, we had also uh, a large uh, a more ef effective uh, generation of vorticity when the jet the jet penetrates uh, into uh, into the water. Uh, we applied the outflows over the uh, four sides of the tank, and uh, uh, the resulting num uh, Reynolds number of this flow uh, with respect to the uh, height of the jet is uh, about 600,000. Uh, so the best we could, we could do uh, um, is uh, uh, 60 particles on the uh, jet height, uh, amounting to about 50 million particles on the whole uh, uh, domain. What you can see here is the modulus of the, of the velocity in the, uh, uh, on a slice in the center line of the tank. And uh, in this uh, in these plots, uh, I reported the, um, the turbulent uh, uh, viscosity, the ratio between the turbulent viscosity and the uh, uh, liquid viscosity, and the uh, vorticity, only the y component, so the component normal to the plane. Uh, as you can see on the left, uh, so it's uh, this is this, this uh, quantity um, uh, gives an indication of the appropriateness of the LES model that we adopted. Uh, since the uh, um, values are uh, very high, in the sense that we reach uh, uh, peak values of about 100, this means that we are not solving uh, the whole inertial range of the turbulence cascade. And therefore, it would be needed an even higher resolution to resolve this, uh, uh, this flow. However, for the qualitative study that we were uh, uh, carrying out on, uh, we, we thought it was enough for also for our uh, resources. Uh, on the right, you can see how rich is, anyway, the range of uh, vortex structures that are generated in the, uh, in the flow. And this is uh, this at, at some point at some point it became a problem because uh, we wanted to visualize this in 3D as uh, 3D uh, vortex structures. So we tried with the finite time uh, Lyapunov exponent that was developed in our group together with the Penanson. Uh, but uh, in 3D and at this Reynolds number, this was not possible. This, this did, uh, didn't give uh, clear enough uh, results for visualizing uh, 3D structures. 
the, the resolution was not fine enough at the end. Uh, as you can see, the free surface uh, can be quite well visualized, but uh, uh, 3D structures, uh, the, uh, let's say the SPH data is not well suited to, uh, to uh, visualize uh, complex 3D uh, vortex structures. So here is where uh, the Andreas brother, uh, Andrea Colagrossi's brother comes into play. Paolo Colagrossi uh, is a, a graphic artist. Uh, he, he works with uh, 3D rendering. And, and so he helped us in the rendering uh, our uh, uh, 3D data. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, with fast rendering of the free surface through his, uh, his uh, quick and effective tools. And then he helped us in um, extracting 3D vertex structures uh, from the uh, SPH data. Here you can see the uh, structures, uh, uh, vertex structures uh, um, extracted from uh, the modulus of the vorticity. And at the end, we had the two different possibility of rendering, one with the modulus of the vorticity and one with the Q criterion. Uh, we, at the end, we prefer the, the, the latter as it is more uh, clean in terms of uh, uh, structures that are detected. Anyway, you can see that with such a visualization, uh, the, the complexity of the flow is uh, uh, completely, we, we can completely appreciate the complexity of the flow, the, uh, also the uh, um, uh, richness of structures that you have at the penetration of the jet. This is something we, we could not even imagine with our uh, uh, SPH data. So uh, uh, here is a, um, a plot of the, uh, of the evolution of the flow and of the free surface uh, for, the, for this uh, first simulation in single phase. And you can see that uh, after the penetration of the jet, there is a large uh, amount of turbulence that is generating uh, uh, with the jet. And then this, there is this uh, kind of toroidal uh, uh, big vortex uh, that expands over the bottom of the, of the, uh, over the, bottom of the tank. Uh, and then eventually impact against uh, the walls. So we, have, uh, we indeed recovered the uh, large amount of eddies that uh, Leonardo was drawing. But uh, at the end, this had this uh, remain close to the walls and the free surface remain, remains almost unperturbed. So there is still something that we are missing with respect to Leonardo's drawing where the free surface is large, largely perturbed and we can see, we can spot these rosettes, this kind of crown on the free surface made of bubbles. So we, we, we come, we, we passed to the two phase flows so uh, we, we thought to, uh, that the, the best to perform a, a two-phase simulation was to inject air directly at the inlet. So in, in, the, in the first instance, we uh, added random particles, random air particles inside the, the, the liquid one at the inlet in a, uh, for an amount of 20%, as also suggested in some reference literature, for example, by chance on a, in 1997, but then we also thought that it is very important to uh, also take into account the air that is uh, entrapped during the penetration of the jet along the surface of the jet. And this, will, this for example, uh, um, documented in the literature by August Prosperetti uh, in the years uh, in 2000. And uh, so we added also a crown of air particles with a thickness of just one radius of the kernel to take into account the air that is entrained together with the jet. In this way, uh, we avoided to have uh, air particles everywhere in the domain. And the final particle numbers was more or less the same of the single phase uh, case. And this is uh, uh, something that is, only, is possible only with SPH, with the uh, grid based methods, methods, this couldn't be possible. Uh, and so at the end, uh, we needed about, uh, for the final simulation, so keeping the same uh, particle resolution, we needed about 70,000 hours of calculation for about 100,000 uh, time step, which is uh, uh, about four times the single phase one and for 8.4 seconds uh, of physical uh, time uh, of the simulation. Uh, 
so uh, in, the, in order to perform this simulation, there was a, a long journey of the data because we, we, we launched the simulation on the cluster in Nantes, but then we recovered the, the data here in Rome, and then we packed them onto our disk and we sent them to Paolo to let him uh, um, uh, to let him post-process this data and give us the uh, video and uh, rendering of those data. So there was a, it was also a quite complex uh, uh, work on, the, on this side uh, due to the large amount of data that we had to process. Uh, so this is one of the uh, results of this process. You can see here only the, uh, uh, the air particles. So we are just uh, uh, showing the air particles of the, of the simulation. And as you can see, they, they, as uh, the, the jet penetrates in the, in the water, the, there are particles that, can, that uh, um, are produced, the particle are bubbles that are produced due to the merging of uh, air particles. And then those bubbles go towards the, the free surface. They burst, and then they just lie on the free surface. Uh, here is a, a close-up view of the uh, of those bubbles close to the uh, where the jet uh, penetrates uh, penetrates into into the water, and uh, uh, in the comparing uh, the uh, modulus of the velocity be, uh, between the two uh, simulation, you can see that uh, the main flow uh, is more or less the same. So we have the main jet that impacts against the bottom, and then. Uh, go towards the front walls, but we have uh, an amount of uh, particles that go towards the, uh, uh, the free surface just above the, uh, the jet. So, uh, and this is a, a, a key difference with respect to the single phase. And indeed, these uh, are the bubbles that uh, uh, produce vorticity. And you can see here some jellyfish structures, which are the bubble producing a, a vorticity during their uh, uh, rising up towards the, the free surface and producing those vortex tube just behind and then bursting at the, at the free surface. And those uh, um, uh, vor uh, vertical, uh, vertical structures that burst are indeed the uh, rosettes that uh, uh, Da Vinci was uh, drawing uh, uh, at, the first, uh, at the free surface just uh, uh, in front of the jet. Uh, here you can see better this. Uh, we can see that the free surface now is uh, uh, perturbed uh, along a region which is a, a, a semicircular uh, in front of the, of the jet. And you can see on the right uh, all the bubbles and all the structures that are going towards uh, uh, the free surface. And uh, here uh, is a, a rendering uh, made by Paolo on a, uh, in a Leonardo style, let's say, where you can see clearly those uh, rosettes uh, uh, generated by the bubble uh, at the free surface. And on the right, uh, some trajectories uh, uh, of the particles. So you can see uh, particles that enter in the waters and then goes up uh, towards uh, the uh, free surface. And then finally, if we compare this uh, uh, to the drawing, we can see that finally we can recover the, actually these uh, uh, um, rosettes at the free surface. We recovered that they had this uh, uh, under the free surface and, the, and, those, uh, um, uh, and those lines from, that goes from uh, 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 the free surface towards the, the bottom of the, of the tank but uh, we uh, were ne not able to uh, recognize those recirculation lines, which is something that we is still puzzling us and maybe is due to the geometry of, uh, the, of, the, of the problem. We don't know they, what, what we was really uh, looking at. And there is, uh, there is so, still a room for uh, some further researches uh, about this. So that's the, the final uh, uh, result of uh, uh, our study. There is a, a number of people that uh, we had to thank for the for this work and for also for the all the audiovisual uh, material that has been uh, produced. And uh, finally, I want just to to thank you and to uh, suggest you to uh, see the movies uh, at the Central Nant uh, website. Just typing on Google uh, Central Nant Vinci, where you can see high resolution uh, videos that uh, are not uh, on the on the on Zoom, uh, we, we, we not uh, of a so high quality. And uh, for other uh, information, you can just refer to the physics of fluid paper, which is uh, in uh, open access. 
So uh, that's all uh, uh, from our side. And thank you again for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Salvatore and David. Uh, that was wonderful. Um, so art and engineering can, can be friends, even in the 21st century, it seems. We, maybe maybe we'd, uh, we thought only Leonardo could be an artist or an engineer, but uh, it's, it's not so. Uh, okay, we have time for some uh, for some questions. If you'd like to ask a question, you can type it in the chat um, and I'll read it. Or of course, you can put your hand up and, um, uh, and come on camera or come on mic and ask your question.